Hey beauties, good morning to you. Listen to me now, beautiful people. You have to watch the signs of the time. You have to watch a narrative that is being played. And it is plaguing a world. And what is happening is that I don't think you're watching it, but subliminally, people are believing that all, pas all pastors are not good. All pastors are fake. And when I say all pastors... I'm using the word all loosely. I'm not necessarily speaking in the absolute. Though, you probably have those people who probably think all barring none are fake, are evil, are wicked, are thieves, are scammers. All the negative um, uh, words that you can think of. And I say that to say this. I, I started to see it from the whole situation, the whole saga with T.D. Jakes. Before him, I don't remember the name of the of a pastor before him, and then I watch it until it led up to the great T D Jakes, and then recently Pastor Keon Henderson told a lady to be quiet, you know, and people started their vitriol, and they're trying to say, and even one person commented, I could tell you that something was wrong with it. I felt it, and <laughs> you know, the, all the suspicious talks. You know, that they feel that it is a matter of discernment, which is just your own suspicious nature and uh, just being negative. You, there are people who just are negative. They, they like to oppose or they, they feel they, there is a sense of gratification that they get when they hear something negative because what has happened is that it kind of, it kind of takes the, the, the spotlight from them, especially if they grew up in homes where absolutely nothing can you say absolutely nothing? That everything that they would have done was regarded as dumb, was regarded as trash, was regarded as nothing. So maybe they grew up with parents who just constantly criticized them. If that is what you know and you didn't unlearn and then relearn, that is what you will do with people. So when if you hear good news, you're going to say, Chow, it's probably fake. It is almost like the story of the man, an old man and a little boy walking with a dog. Or walking on, um, sorry, they, they were riding on a donkey two of them and people say look at how the evil they are so the elderly the elderly man got off and it's as though they were saying the young boy has no respect for the elderly the, the, the elderly went on and the little boy came um started to walk and they said oh my goodness these people um the, the, the elderly man has no heart towards a little boy when you look they end up carrying the donkey and somebody's still making a comment on it that you know some sort of struggling so in other words you have people who are like that their eyes are linear it's not quantum they can't see outside of how they were brought up so they are very very much negative they're very negative they can't help it it's a part of them it's a part of their psyche even people in churches so as soon as they, it's almost like they, like they have itching here, they feel good. As soon as they come, what bad news? They all, that is all left for them to do, to say. What bad news do you have? I want some juicy news. I want some gossip. I want slander. I want rumor. Please bring it to me. Bring it to me. I can't wait for it. And it is plaguing the church. And people are, not, are, are wondering why people are drifting from church. Do you realize that people are not going to, if you're an Adventist, going to, uh, what you call it, Sabbath school? They're not going to Sunday school. So the generation that is growing up have no regard for church. I was listening to a man and I said to myself, I can't even blame him. Big, you know, when I say big man, he looks to be late 30s or 40s. Maybe he's younger, I don't know. And the way how he could, if I wasn't a child of God, let me tell you, that man could have almost convinced me. Of what he's saying i mean it's a fallacy it's a farce and he said oh you grew up hearing um you're born evil and you know when we're talking about born in sin and and shaped in iniquity yet you serve an omniscient omnipotent omnipresent god yet he's if he's omniscient and if he's all powerful why would you born in such evil and you're told that you're no good i know this i know that mind you that was a a very much a twist from you know um a, a, a malady it was not true it's a fallacy sorry as it relates to the word of god being born in sin and shaped in iniquity doesn't mean that you're nothing and you're no good and you're you know all of these little things that's not what the scripture was saying it was saying is that because of sin he he the way how he brought it across is all like he said an evil baby is born in you no not in the way that he was connoting the message but there were people who accepted what he was saying and say that oh, we're pushing this sort of um, fallacy to people. 
you know, a, a broken thinking to say you have an all powerful God, yet He makes you born evil. You know, like He's saying, the two don't correlate. But I, 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 what I'm saying to you that religion has actually caused things like these. So that is why, if you see a situation now where a pastor says to somebody, hush, be quiet. I told you now that man is not a Christian man. He's not good. He's evil. He's narcissistic. He's a woman. Um, what you call it there now? He's a uh, uh, what's it? He's not. What you have the opposite? Um, where they talk about putting down women. The word just kind of eluded me a while ago. You know. And uh, you know, like he's a sexist and puts down women and lifts up other you know men because it, they feel it's a man's world and people will come with all manner of evil and all manner of fallacy and distractions and suspicions over overly i call it suspicious ways they're overly suspicious that's not discernment i did a video on that that's not discernment people it is a ploy it is a trap it is it's a distraction from the enemy to make you steer yourselves away from God. Instead of staring straight in the center, you steer to the right, you steer to the left. It is not godly, it is not true. And I'm so sorry that that guy has that understanding of humanity when the Bible says we were born in sin. Mankind was born, in, um, to make it like you're saying, an evil baby is in you, but it's not so much a, an evil baby. It's that the reality is that when you are born, because of the flesh, the flesh is prone to failure, prone to wonder, W-A-N-D-E-R. So it's not a matter that a monster baby, you're an omen baby, so to speak, is in your belly. No. But because we have a remnant and a savior. And I'm going to show you how broken we are. I started to think on the, the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Look at us as human beings, every last one of us. At some point, even if we're different now. If, for instance, if, for instance, you know, I'm talking about the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Let us put ourselves in the stead of Jesus and she was thrown out. Let me tell you something. You pr the stones that would bust that lady head that burst that woman's head. She would, the licks would be astronomical. The stones would come, they would come, they would come. When you start to hear people say, yes, kill the slut, kill the whore, kill the B-I-T-C-H, kill her, do all things to her. Think about it, whether you're a Christian or not. So let us say we were there instead of Jesus and she was thrown out of us. We wouldn't even ask the question, so what happened to the man? Because she could not have been caught in the act of adultery on her own. Maybe one might say, who, who did they catch her with? You know? Does his wife know? Did you tell him not? To? And up to now, he's not scolded, you know. I'm just showing you a narrative here. And let me tell you, the stones would come at her because we're, they were still under the mosaic, uh, mosaic, sorry, mosaic law. Remember, Jesus had not died, been buried, and then resurrected, risen, and, you know. So, we, let us say we were in, in his place in the sense of being there at the time. She would have been a dead woman. The stones, we would see stone marks on her entire body. Christian or not and look at the difference in how Jesus responded to her tell you what people and I'm, I'm just putting it in our modern day way of speaking he said if you can search yourself and search your hearts and there is nothing sinful about it or you have not done anything sinful since you've been on this earth you can actually stone her because we're still under the mosaic law like we keep saying mosaic mosaic law we're still under it, so go ahead. And it says, from the eldest to the youngest walked away. It says, where are your accusers? And she said, I don't know. I say, well, I don't accuse you. All I'm simply saying to you, honey bunny, there's a better way to live. You don't have to live this way anymore. I love you. Unlearn, relearn. Get out of that lifestyle. You see the difference? We don't respond to people like that as Christians or non-Christians. We, we throw the stones. We would be like those people that walked away, that wanted to throw the stones. Jesus, the only being I see. Maybe I have one or two other people, unless, and maybe because they've been through hell and back, why they now develop a compassionate heart. And we hurl these things at pastors to make them seem as though, and it is a ploy, a plot from the enemy. You have to be wise as a serpent and watch and see that it is a ploy. Not all pastors, one and two maybe stray. Not the majority. Be careful.
guys follow me on tiktok subscribe to my youtube channel share this message please